If you're using pheromone-based lures inside a trap, you're probably doing it wrong. If you want to kill a guy, kill him with sex. Let me show you how to do that. Hey guys, Sean from Living Seeds, your seed guru. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use a pheromone-based lure correctly. If you know anything about pheromone-based lures, you know that what I'm doing right now is absolutely incorrect and will ensure that you catch less of the pests that are attacking your crops. How pheromone-based lures work, this is what's called a sex lure, and this little piece of rubber that I'm holding in my hand smells like a super sexy cutworm female moth. We are in one of our tomato seed production tunnels. We've got about 34 of these tunnels. And you'll see that we have a whole lot of varieties of tomatoes inside here. One of the pests that we experience inside this tunnel is either cutworm or tomato bollworm. And we trap them in these traps using sex-based lures. This is a yellow bucket funnel trap. Let me repeat that for you. This is a yellow bucket funnel trap. Say it quickly with me. Yellow bucket funnel trap. This is a trap specifically designed to catch moths. The way that yellow bucket funnel trap works is that we put a synthetic female sex lure. It smells like a super sexy female moth. And because it's synthetic, we're actually able to, to create a scent that overpowers the scent of real female moths. So the males fly past the natural females and try and mate the super sexy female. When they try and mate her, the trap is designed that the males fall down through a hole over here. I'll show that to you now. Into some water and they drown. However, there is a way to make sure that this trap works correctly. Let me show you how to do that. When you buy your yellow bucket funnel trap, there are a couple of things inside. Let me run through them for you quickly. The first one is a piece of string to suspend it. There'll be a cage to hold the pheromone lure. There'll be a latex glove and there will be a species specific lure included depending on which trap you ordered. The end of the string has an aglet. And you can see that the aglet, if you bend it over like this, it'll trap itself into the hole in the lid. And all you do is you take it, you push it through, push it through. And then as you pull it back, it'll actually lock itself into place like that. Step two, take your cage and push the cage into the hole in the top of the lid like that. You can now take the cap off the lid. Please note that I have not touched the lure yet at all. Trying to get a medium glove onto a large hand. Whoops, check at that. Step three is put the glove on. Step four is you take the lure out of the bag and without touching the outside of the trap with the lure or with your gloved hand. You put the lure into the cage. Now what you do is you take the glove off your hand, do it inside out, put the glove somewhere safe so it doesn't blow around. The important part over here is you haven't touched the lure with your hand and you haven't touched the outside of the container with your gloved hand. If you touch the lure and then used your gloved hand to touch the outside of the container, you will be transferring the pheromone scent to the outside of this bucket. And what's going to happen is the males are going to come and mate the outside of the bucket. You don't want that. On conventional farms where they're not concerned about using poisons or, or doing things organically because they want to feed their family healthy food, they will normally put a poison tablet inside here and what will happen is that the males will fall through the hole in the lid into the bottom and they will be killed by the poison. On Living Seeds Farm we have a slight adaption over here. We put a little bit of water inside here with a couple of drops of sunlight liquid. What the sunlight liquid does is it drops the viscosity of the water so when the moths fall into the water they die a clean death. In this tunnel, we are trying to control uh, cutworm and tomato bollworm. So this trap has been set up specifically for that purpose. 
you need to clean your trap out at least once a week. On Living Seeds Farm, we clean out all of our traps on a Monday morning. We have a report that gets generated so we know if there's an increase in pest incidence. The reporting allows us to actually prepare for an oncoming pest storm. A good example is if we have one trap hanging over here and it's trapping, for example, 10 moths a week, then we know that there are moths present, but it's not really a crisis. If suddenly it goes from one week where we're catching five, seven moths, the next week we suddenly catch 25 moths. We know that we need to put up additional traps to try and counteract the additional pest load. For the shortest path to success, like and subscribe, you can help another gardener succeed.